Welcome to today's Harvard Medical School Safety, Quality, Informatics Leadership Q&A session. I'm David Roberts, Dean of the Office for External Education here at Harvard Medical School, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Senior Associate Dean of Postgraduate Medical Education, Dr. Ajay Singh. I am delighted to welcome you to today's session as I talk with Ajay about the key highlights and components of the Safety Quality Informatics Leadership Certificate Program. Just to let you know, we use the term SQIL, it's an acronym of S-Q-I-L, when we talk about this program, so I may use that today. We recognize in today's current healthcare environment, change is constant. Providers like yourselves are trying to deliver high value care with good quality outcomes, as well as care that is safe and free from medical errors. When you add new technology that is being introduced to the way we deliver healthcare, it's very difficult to curb costs, become efficient, and provide the care we all strive to deliver. The SQUIL program aims to provide you with the tools you need to become a global leader in healthcare delivery. We are very pleased to have uh, Ajay with us today. Welcome. And I just, uh, I want to start with the first question. I, I really want to just get an overview of the SQUIL program. The Safety Quality Informatics Leadership Program, SQUIL, uh, is a one-year hybrid certificate program. And what I mean by a hybrid certificate program is that it's, it's a blended program where we combine uh, live in-person workshop um, exposure for students with uh, online uh, education. Uh, we have synchronous and asynchronous content uh, that gets uh, communicated to students. Um, the very big advantage of this program is that uh, you learn about safety, quality, medical informatics, and leadership from some of the best people uh, at Harvard Medical School while you can spend most of your time doing your job, um, spending time with family, and being in, in the country uh, where, you, where you live. The remarkable aspects of the SQUIL program are that, uh, are that it uh, brings together a broad array of students, uh, people that include doctors, nurses, social workers, pharmacists, and dentists who come together, network together, but also learn together. And they learn so that they can become experts in, in this very important field of safety and quality. So we heard just a little bit, I mean, it sounds uh, great. I'm sure there are people who are already uh, interested in learning more. What kind of experience uh, will they have in the program? Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, uh, you know, if I took a, a quote from some of the students who graduate from the program, um, they, the words they use are things like transformational. Wow, it's the best experience I've had in a long time in education. And why do they say that? Well, they say that because what we try to do is to avoid your traditional sitting in a, in, a, in a lecture theater, seeing slide after slide on PowerPoint, to really a more of a um, uh, experience that involves case-based learning, uh, it involves simulation, it involves thinking about uh, what are the sort of problems that leaders grapple with in the, health, in, in the hospital or in the healthcare system. Uh, there's also a tremendous focus on team learning, so you not only learn from faculty, but you also learn from your peers. Uh, and with the diverse background of, of our participants, as I discussed before, uh, there's, a, there's a richness to the, to the experience that I think is, uh, is, is unique with this program as compared to anything else that's out there. You spoke a little bit about diversity in terms of background of learners, uh, doctors, nurses, social workers, researchers, academics. And you've talked a little bit about diversity of formats, meaning online, in-person, uh, group work. Um, and you've talked a little bit about diversity of location. I've come and, and taught in the course in a variety of different locations here, Shanghai, other, other places. What do you think is the value? What do people say about the value of that diversity as they look back on that experience? So you're absolutely right. We, we, we draw students from over 30 countries. Um, um, 
that brings along with it a diversity of experiences. So as you know, uh, healthcare, uh, like ice cream, comes into different flavors. Um, we have a very quality oriented focus to healthcare in many countries in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, there are also uh, uh, hospital systems that are much more driven by um, uh, not so much outcomes, but by financial gain. Um, they bring those experiences. Most countries nowadays have a combination of both, uh, outcome-based, uh, quality-based systems that keep an eye on, 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 on profit and on revenue. So that richness of experience from this diverse group of people um, is one aspect of the program that, that I think is, that is, that is important. Um, we bring people from different specialties. Um, I think that if you and I who work in hospitals look at uh, reflect back on what it was like 30 years ago compared to what it is now in healthcare, it's much more team orientated. Mm -hmm. um, we work together uh, shoulder to shoulder with nurses, social workers, care coordinators. Well, these are the people who are part of our our, our student body. So they bring that richness of experience. It's not simply um, a case where you can think, this is what a doctor would do in that situation. It's what would the team do? And that team includes all of these people. And so that's important. And then the third thing I think that is very um, key is that based on the types of leaders we have for this program, Chuck Friedman, who is the professor of learning health science at the University of Michigan, Aziz Sheikh, who's the dean for data science at the University of Edinburgh, Kay Santos, who's the chief medical officer at Chelsea he uh, Health Group, they bring also a diversity of experience. They, as leaders, have worked in different health systems and they talk about their own experiences. So I do think that the, the, this program delivers a rich discussion and learning from all types of individuals and all types of settings that I think is pretty unique. So I, what I heard was diversity of learners, diversity of backgrounds, diversity of sites, diversity of faculty, diversity of perspectives, and I don't think there's any other program quite like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Tell us about the, um, the, you know, the, the work that the, the learners will do. There's transformative experiential learning, not just in the classroom. But there's, there's also a, a capstone project. Tell us about that. So the capstone project is, um, is, is I think, the defining uh, activity in the second half of the year. Um, it, it requires students to come together with an individual written project that they get initially peer-reviewed by other colleagues, uh, other peers. So peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning peer -peer in, peer in the session. In wow. the session. Uh, in, in, in preparing these, uh, these project proposals. And then they're assigned a Harvard advisor, and that Harvard advisor works with them to tweak their proposal, their ideas, to make these ideas hopefully more feasible. Um, this proposal um, makes them think out of the box. It allows them to apply the learning um, that they've acquired from this program to a project that hopefully they can do in their home country or their home setting. Um, it, it's not entirely uh, a formative experience. There is some uh, competitiveness to it. It's also evaluated and you need to uh, you need to successfully complete the capstone and pass the pro uh, the, the proposal has to achieve a pass in order for you to graduate from the program. Uh, but the end result for the students is that they walk away with with a with a enduring entity that they can either use to apply for grants or they can actually apply it in their home institution and hopefully see a positive outcome. Um, but at the end of the day, they also feel like they've accomplished something, they've achieved something. I think that's great. As an educator, you know, putting my educator hat on for a second, you know, they, not only are they learning and they were informing people, but they're transforming their 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 lives and their careers through very practical application of the material to their daily lives. So I think one of the questions that people, you know, I'm sure want to know is, how is this going to change my career? If they, you know, if if you were trying to convince me to do this, what would you say? How is it going to help my career? Well, I think the most important aspect of how it changes you and how it impacts on your career is that it allows you to think differently. Um, it provides you tools in, a, in your toolbox that you didn't have or that weren't as uh, sharp or as effective as, as, as they can be now. 
Um, we, in the last workshop, in the final workshop of the program, we have several sessions on how you interview better, how you project yourself better, how you use these skills to advance your career. And when I talk to students who graduate and to alum from the program, they tell me that this allows them to either advance in their career or for some of them actually change career uh, trajectories to go into something that's more focused on quality and safety from uh, from some from being a clinician on the floor taking care of patients. That's great. I think one of the the things that people may want to know about is you know what do let's assume you uh, uh, enroll you you apply you enroll you attend you do well you you pass the capstone you succeed what's the marker of this? What's the hallmark of this of successful completion? In our Harvard Medical School certificate programs, students who successfully complete the program walk away with a certificate of completion. Um, that's really important for them. Um, it's not obtained easily. They have to work really hard for it. Um, with that, they can apply uh, for associate alumni status at Harvard Medical School and at Harvard. That's of great value because it allows them to network in their local countries um, at Harvard clubs and also Harvard alumni uh, meetings. We in the Squill program do have um, some alumni activities that happen during the year that they can attend. But I think beyond all of that, the most important thing they walk away with is they walk away with knowledge and skills and lastly, a, a list or a con connectivity with a whole group of people uh, who are their colleagues, mm. who they can keep in touch with, yeah. uh, who they can continue to learn from. And hopefully um, at some future date, they'll, these students will come back and they'll participate in one of our degree programs, like our healthcare quality uh, and safety degree or our uh, service o uh, clinical service operations degree, because that's the next step in learning. How do you take what you've learned here and build on it, not only to advance your career, but also to, uh, to learn more? I remember a number of years ago, you and I were uh, sitting and talking about what should we do next, and uh, the idea for this program came up right there, and we you know, sort of drafted it on a piece of paper. And uh, now in looking back on it and comparing this to other programs, because there are other programs out there, what do you think, you know, in the end, what's, what's unique about this, and what would you say to someone who's really trying to choose this versus another program? Three things. Number one, uh, the extraordinarily fa extraordinary global faculty that we leverage. Not only faculty from Harvard Medical School, but faculty from all over the world. We go after the best people. These are not just Harvard Medical School faculty, but they're faculty from the Harvard Business School, from the Harvard School of Public Health, the Kennedy School. We go out there looking for the best faculty to teach and to be partners in learning for these students. Second, the global network that the students acquire from all of this. Uh, and third, really the idea of being able to think differently. The idea of being able to say, okay, I can do anything I want to in safety. I may not be able to do everything. I may need more learning. I may need more experience, but it's possible. And that ability to say it's possible is something that I think is, 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 is an accomplishment that I think we're very proud of in our program. Thank you, Ajay. That was great. I think that's a good place to end. And uh, I think ending on what's possible is really exciting. Mm -hmm.